Hi, I'm Aaron Quint with Hammer and Hand, and today we're making some uh, curved barge rafters for a uh, current remodel in Hillsboro. Um, I'm going to walk you through the process a little bit, and just first off, the, the reason we're in the shop and not in the field is because the, uh, the curve of the barge rafter exceeds the width of our lumber, so we have to do a couple add-ons and then route the, the pattern into it and then uh, take it out to the site and apply it. So now I'm just going to show you how we got to our radius with the different, the, uh, different barge rafters throughout the house. <clears throat> in this house, there's probably 13 different gable ends, and in, contained in those 13 gable ends, there's three different radiuses. So we had to end up making three different pattern bits, or excuse me, jigs, which you can see down here. <clears throat> One's for all these bump out dormers that we have. Then we have the, the main kitchen living room area, and then the west porch rafter. And what you see right here is, is the barge rafter, which is thicker than the actual rafter tail. And I'll show you how we get the rafter tail out of that in a moment. But first, to get all these radiuses, we were actually pretty lucky with these plans. The, uh, the architect was pretty specific about our radius and where to stop it and, and continue on to a straight line for the rafter. So essentially, we just took a couple crucial points here and plotted them on a big uh, piece of plywood. And uh, so essentially we can do it in full scale and then ran a regular radius arm and swung this radius out and then cut the pattern out, which is what we have here. Um, so take for instance, this kitchen and living room barge rafter. This is uh, he called out 11 and a quarter, which is what two by 12 comes out to the site at usually. Um, I made it 11, uh, I made it 11 and three eighths just in case it comes out 11 and a half. Sometimes there's a little difference in, in material when it comes out. But essentially, this second line right here represents the uh, rafter tail, which is going to be shorter. So what we're going to do is make all the barge rafters first, and then I can go back into the shop with the bandsaw and cut this back down. So then I have my pit, or excuse me, my, uh, my jig contained inside of this already made jig. I just cut it out, and we're just ready to go. Uh, so yeah, that's how we got to it. We just, like I said again, took very specific points from this architectural drawing mapped it out on a full size scale so we can see what's going on. If there's any issues that we have to kind of mitigate in the field, we can usually see them on the four by eight sheet of plywood and kind of take care of them on the ground instead of, you know, 15, 20 feet in the air. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how we start to apply this to the actual material. Um, this is the, <clears throat> the biggest barge rafter we have. It's for, for the kitchen living area. Um, so you'll see when we throw this, when th this uh, jig gets thrown on here, it extends past the actual width of our 2x12. So we have to add something onto this so we can get this curved tail incorporated into our barge rafter. So the other little thing we ran into was that when you order the cedar, it comes with, I don't know if you can see it, but it comes with a radius on it. That's just factory. So, and we can't join something up with the radius edge because you end up with this really weird V groove that no one ever wants to see, then you have to fill it. So we had to cut a half inch out of this so we have a square glue up surface and then remill this so it's square on this side. And essentially we're gonna put these together. I'll show you in a moment, we, we do with dominoes. We put those together and then we can draw on here the, um, the uh, actual full scale barge rafter swoop and then we can cut it out. So just to kind of you know, make a recap, we have to make this board bigger in order to incorporate this full-size swoop, and that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna use this uh, Type-On polyurethane glue, which is a really good waterproof glue. It's essentially the uh, Type-On's equivalent to Gorilla Glue, but you don't have to wet one side, so the application's a bit easier. The open time is pretty good, and the clamp time is about one to four hours, which is ideal, so we can start sanding and detailing these things. We use this acid brush just to get good coverage because we're going to put these dominoes here. I'll show you. But these uh, dominoes are going to slip in here. And we want good coverage all around there. All right, now we'll get the other side.
And I can't forget this little return cut piece because we want as much glue surface as we can get. And now we're gonna put a little in the uh, opposing side of the domino slot of the mortise. Clamp it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to make sure that the clamp, <clears throat> these are going to be painted, so they're not stain gray, but I want to make sure the clamp doesn't touch the squeeze out of the glue because the black of this metal will transfer to the cedar and you'll never be able to get it out. <clears throat> so you just hold it off like an eighth or so. Another thing to point out too is uh, I don't have to use any calls here because we're gonna cut all this off. Usually in a, a more fine furniture application, <clears throat> excuse me, we would call under each one of these clamps because it's a finished surface. Where essentially you can see we're gonna cut and route this off so I can clamp away and not worrying about marring that surface. All right, so what we have over here is one that's already been glued up and the clamps have been taken off. It's for a different section of the house. So this one's a two by 10 as opposed to that two by 12. <clears throat> but it's essentially the same thing. We had to glue up in order to get the, the width we need for this swoop. And what I'm gonna do now is I'll put this jig on here We've already rough cut it to within about a quarter of an inch with a jigsaw. And I'm gonna put this on and route it with a pattern bit. And this regular rafter, the uh, plum cut on this uh, barge rafter, we're just gonna do with a skill saw like we would in the field. But these curved parts we're gonna do with a pattern bit. That's our barge rafter and then the only thing left to do now, this, you know, excluding putting it on the house, is detailed up. So we gotta continue this round over this from the factory all the way out, belt sand the joint, any filling needs to be done, we would do that now, and we might prime it before we get up there, but it's, we'll see how, how moist the lumber is, uh, and if it's a little too moist, we'll wait to prime it until it's up on the house. 